Yeah, sure. Hello, hello, everybody. Um, so let's speak a both about the network. It's changing the topic of the whole day, of course. Um, but it's a, it's a use case. It's a, it's a user story, and it's not mentioning branding at all. Although this presentation is sponsored by Director of Technology, and in during the presentation, I will speak about audio bridges, etc. So. Those are not the one used in the presentation, but those are obviously the best one because they are the sponsor of this presentation. That being said, <laughs> that being said, no more uh, no more marketing anymore. Uh, subsidiary disclaimer is, of course, this is inspired from a real case, but this is also um, expanded. So, uh, as we say in the movies, uh, no relation to actual person, uh, etc. If the the words were the names were changed, etc., etc. Uh, I say that for my for my colleagues who I work with that, so that they don't take anything personally because um, it's it's a tough subject. It's the the subject of. AV and IT and working together with AV and IT. Uh, of course, we would like to see the AV world as big as that. But it's really small compared to, there's a bit of latency that it's, it's, breaking, the, it's breaking the dynamic of the presentation, <laughs> uh, compared to IT, of course. And we wish we were here, OK? Uh, but as a matter of fact, We are actually here. Uh, we still need bridges, bridges in all the meaning of bridge, to uh, to do the, the the communication between AT and IV world. And then that being said, it's ki it's it's killing it's it's killing killing the day. I, I will I will find a way to keep the. Uh, I, I'm Nicolas Stromer. Uh, I'm a Tight Cat5 worker, so that's like a tight rope worker, worker, but on a Cat5. Uh, hence my condition. No, I'm kidding. It's a, it's a bad joke. It's a bad joke. Uh, no, uh, so I'm a med media network consultant at uh, NSI Squared Consulting. That's my private company. But of course, I'm a network technologist at Director GmbH. Uh, that's the reason I'm here. Uh, Director is the most part of my work. Uh, IT management, music production, broadcasting, development, project management, etc. Uh, name it. I can talk about it. I'm probably not the best, uh, the best at it, but I know a bit of everything. Uh, I have a PhD, but who cares? Um, so yes, um, what we will talk about today is the prerogatives of IV, AV, and IT, and uh, we will do a reality check. So. We will see why I was called to this project um, and how we solved the project by analyzing the topology, the problem they had, and how we made it simple. Because basically, that's it. If you want two teams to work together, they need to work on a similar context, and you have to strip it away. You have to simplify it. So um, of course, there are remaining issues. Uh, that we will speak about too. Okay. Uh, it's actually good that it's slow. It makes me speak a little bit slower as well. Uh, so this is this is a presentation made uh, in the uh, in the way of the persuaders. If you are old enough to be liking all the UK TV shows of the, of the 70s. You might have heard of the Pacer Others. In French, uh, Amica Mon Votre, and uh, in German, Die Zwei. Ah, not, not, yeah? Yeah? Yeah. Uh, so um, two, uh, two brothers that cannot do not share anything in common, OK? Um, IT is really owns the network, okay? IT is the network provider, so why, why multimedia is the network user, but it needs the network right now, okay? You cannot do multimedia without the network. IT does horizontal management. It has a lot of different customers, 
and cannot privilege one customer over the other. The problem of the IT team in a big organizations like the, the one we are talking about, which I will not name, uh, they have a lot of different customers and if they begin having a priority policy, every department will come and say, why do I, am I not the priority? So they tend to be neutral and this is problematic for the media networking because a media networking is a special network, a real-time network that needs special taking care of. Multimedia obviously does vertical management. It's just interested in, in its own verticality. What am I doing? What am I producing? How can I produce best? Uh, IT does all-purpose networking and multimedia does real-time networking. And this is a dramatic difference uh, in the way you see the network, in the way you deal with uh, issues on the network and how you monitor the network. Uh, rule number one in IT is security. And this is the rule number one, while in multimedia it's operations. In multimedia, you want, they want production of the content. If they have to break security to ensure that they will be able to run a meeting or a show, they will break, se break security. Security is not their highest priority. While IT doesn't care about the show or the meeting, so this, the, I, I will describe the, the later, but the, the meeting cannot happen from the IT point of view. If security is not there, the meeting cannot happen. From the multimedia point of view, if there's no, meet, if there's no network, I don't care, the meeting needs to happen, okay? So too many times IT has been annoyed by naive users, by users that uh, is too many times annoyed by naive users, new, new users that really don't take the effort of minimal underst understanding of IT, which is usually not the multimedia team, but I'm talking about horizontal management. Well, multimedia too many times has to fix audio glitches, and they, they are often caused by the network, but not necessarily, but it's always easier to blame the other part. So, and because you don't understand, so I don't understand the network, so there's a problem, it must be in the network. In the end, IT, zero user trust. My users of my organization, I don't trust them. So I will lock everything I can lock for them to not be able to wander outside of the process. Well, multimedia has zero network trust. Have you met someone at the show, a user that says, I don't need redundancy on my network? Okay, by this very fact that we use re network redundancy, it shows that we do not trust the network. But of course, this distrust goes way beyond that in this case. Uh -huh. So yeah, Brett Sinclair and Danny White. It's the, the metaphor about the 70 shows for the youngest one of us. Um, so IT has the security prerogative, multimedia has the operational prerogative, and those two make media over IP. You cannot do one without the other. You, you have to have security. And security, again, security in the broad sense of them. Security in the fact that it is about designing a network that works in the long term. And um, uh, so, there's, so there's, a, there's a tension between specification and reality. The IT will specify, okay, there's a new project, there's a new meeting room. IT comes and says, okay, we did this addressing scheme, we will practice things like that. And um, defining IP addresses, layers, network, firewall rules, multimedia, take care of the installation and the operation. And most of the time, I have no access to, the, to a network. I, need, I have multiple VLANs, for instance, and I miss access to a VLAN. What do I do? Uh, I, ha I add a USB Ethernet converter to access the VLAN directly. This is a security flow because the, the computer using like that can serve as a bridge between two networks. 
No time to set IP because operations. Who has time to do operations? No time to set IP. Well, <coughs> automatic addressing will do. Yes, until you have to do um, debugging on your network and open and uh, and maintenance, etc. No device monitoring. No access rights. So everybody has access to the device all the time. And uh, that's also a problem because actually what we, what we um, saw is that most of the errors were from users misusing the network or misusing <coughs> the, the different uh, uh, parameters. So reality check. This was, of course, an extreme case. Uh, but you can find threats of this tension in every installation. Um, I dare anyone to tell me, oh, we had a project and IT and AV were just friends during all the time. Um, so now we will take a look at this uh, precise example of a non-governmental organization that deals with many meetings a day. So there are four locations and 60 plus meeting room with outside IV contributions. We have the central avenue, which has the master control room, one big, big meeting room, uh, 30 meeting room, small meeting rooms, and one core switch. And this is the core switch for the whole campus. So three other locations, each one with five to 10 meeting rooms. And as I said, the uplink to, to, the, to, the, to the core switch of the, of the central venue. Uh, it's a standard architecture, but for, no, but for non media over IP. Of course, if you do media over IP, you tend to not route directly to a, cent to, to a center switch. You will have multiple layers of routing to optimize the, to optimize the, the, the media flows and the bandwidth. Okay, so a typical meeting room looks like that. I mean, from my point of view, of course, but from the point of view. Ah, sorry. Uh, meet, a typical meeting room server rack come, looks like that. So we have a conference system, we have, a, we have an audio system, we have a video matrix. Basically, it's a, it's a meeting room that records video, that records audio, <laughs> and because of the outside contribution, all this audio and the video is made available through a meeting, um, meeting conference system. PTZ cameras, uh, an audio matrix, uh, an audio bridge for isolation, I will talk about that later, and an outside contribution system. So usually a video conference PC. But this means that there is one PC that has an internet connection. Again, a security risk. So the problem, is that all meeting rooms are isolated. So the story is that they started very naively by putting everything on the same network, slash 24. And at some point, there was too many, too, too many computers. And they began to have problems of side effects when I change one. It's, it's, an, over, it's an audio over IP network. So when I change one device or the, the PTP master in changing configuration issues. So they went to the simple solution, okay, each device will be an isolated network, isolated. So no, nothing coming out of this network, except audio. And how do you pass audio between networks without connecting the networks? Via the audio bridge I mentioned before. So it's one device that has two audio interfaces and just passing back and forth. Uh, that's I'm exp explaining here. Uh, that unfortunately adds a layer of routing. So it's, for me, it's a difficulty rather than, a, than, than a simply, simplifying uh, the problem. And of course, because the, the network is isolated, you are blind of what happens on the other side of the bridge. So you want to do, you want to do maintenance, you have to go to the meeting room. Someone calls you and say, it's not working, you have to go to the meeting room. That's not really networky. Um, random clocking errors, especially because the bridges they use were, were having no SRC cards. 
so they had to have a specific cooking scheme and um, it was easy to break this cooking scheme very very easy uh, some room shared the same vegan because it's an ongoing work so we went to the point where some rooms shared the same vegan and this meaning that you could access the equipment of one room from the other room and uh, this is problematic because it breaks the fact that each room should be isolated but that each room should be its own production environment with its own users and its own practice uh, and yeah and prior consulting led to eliminate some evident solutions that we eventually uh, use so this is the and I'm not I, I of course I'm rooting for my side but this, this is this is not even the the the, the point here, the point is that using the right consultant is important and not choosing some, some uh, random company that has no experience in the network. They used an AV consultant that had no experience in the network. And of course, this consultant chose simple solutions that he could understand rather than doing this bridging between IT and IV. And there are plenty of consultants that do IT and IV. So again, um, not a private publicity. <sighs> okay, so um, the main problem was isolation. You lose visibility, and this uh, loss of visibility uh, means a loss of implication. Okay, if I'm in the master control room, I don't know what's in what's in the meeting room, so I don't care. IT doesn't see the network, so IT IT doesn't care at all. It's your network. Do do what you want with it. The bridge solution fixes a problem that could be solved more gracefully. And this is a typical network convergence problem. When I have multiple networks, when I have multiple media on the network, it's always easier to have completely isolated VLANs or isolated networks, physical networks. But this is not the solution because at some point, you will want to um, unify the control or to be able to exchange media between those networks. So IT says, I give you a VLAN, you do what you want with your VLAN. Multimedia says, okay, IP power will be good enough, I just need to pass audio, what, what else can be wrong, okay? This, the, this network, the, this, this technology they use here is known for its simplicity, so of course it will be simple. When we scale up, of course it will be simple. Um, so we worked to, toward a, a better solution, and uh, this better solution was a need of supervision and resource sharing with security and documentation. This seems uh, blandly obvious, but it has to. We have to. We have to work toward that by learning each other prerogatives and ecosystem. And this was training, training of AV of the, the IT team and training of IT of the AV team. Of course, not training to an operational level, but training to being able to understand why does my colleague reply to my question like this? Why does it not allow to me to do what I want to do? The management software and the layer three architecture. So obviously, you may have understood by then, uh, no more isolated networks. All networks are routed together so that everything can be managed through the master control room. And a persuader, an individual fit for communication that does communication between the two teams. And that's not the consultant. That's someone in-house. If you take the consultant to do that, you are basically hiring someone else. Someone from the AV team? And it was someone from the AV team, yeah. It was someone from the AV team with a good understanding of IT, not, not at first, but also a good um, envy to learn and a curiosity. Curiosity, basically you choose your people by having curiosity. Some people are good for production and they are the best at doing AV content. And some people, like me, I am one of those. They are very curious, but very bad at delivering. So, um, <laughs> uh, documentation and process. 
this is the key. You want to, because basically the AV guys, and I guess there are a lot of those guys in the boat at the moment, we solve problems all day. So I would call them every two weeks or every month and say, how was, how was the, 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 the last days? Oh yes, everything was good, we had no issue. And then we continue discussing and yes, yeah, so this was not working and we had this issue and we had this cracking. But they don't think about it because all day long, a Navy guy is solving problem. He is, he is focusing on content delivery. So if delivery is not there, he has a job. So the, the whole job of a Navy guy is solving problems. So being able to document those problems is important. But this man in the middle, the persuader, is a, is a unicorn. It's difficult to find people like that. Immensely creative, uh, problem solver. Yeah, the, so um, and that's what I wanted to do. So on the, on the AV side, we have immensely creative people with a problem solving uh, ability. And on the IT side, we, are, we have a rigorous capability of building a long time and maintainable network. And this unicorn must have those two qualities. Okay, you have to know the, <laughs> and I see some, so some, some here, but um, it, uh, the person should take on the project management, handle the requirement definition, and the achievement for both teams. So this is the difficulty because it's someone that sometimes feel like it is betraying his own side because he understands the need of the other side to advocate for a different solution. So yeah, crucial ingredients for, success, for a successful project, people. Who would know the right people would help into making a project uh, successful? Okay, so yeah, the transition process. So this was, this was done during uh, one or two months. So we were configuring, oh, there's a branding here. Uh, so um, we were configuring the software with user and roles. Uh, we're configuring every device during the uh, downtime on the uh, on, on the on the AV activity, and um, we also did testing and validation, obviously, and a, a, a process to uh, under print cases because. By doing this overall reconfiguring of the network, we noticed a lot of incoherencies that just weren't there. Bad firmware version, uh, impossible things they, were, they thought that it was able to do. And the process was as simple as a Excel sheet with this is the device I have on the network. This is what I'm expecting on the network. And the IT says, cool, I know what device you are using. I know the address of the device. So what will I do? When I will see something bad on the network, a bad uh, uh, device, a bad behaving device, I will tell you, you have a problem on your mixer. You have a problem on your PTZ camera, for instance. So again, very simple. One of the, 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 the switch firmware problem we solved, thanks to a PTP analysis tool, we provided the capture to the IT team. They said, OK, now I saw, now I see the program is on the network. So I will fix the problem. Again, just being aware and communicating. <sighs> so yeah, you saw the, uh, the, the, big the big matrix. This is what one user on one meeting room was working on. <laughs> OK, tell me you, 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 tell me you don't do mistakes. <laughs> And uh, by using a magical software that stands in three letters, we, uh, we, we, we came down to just what is needed for the meeting. And because this organization is using a lot of outside people to, to run the meetings, it's really, it's really important to give the users just what they need and not too much and not too less. Uh, yeah, so uh, kiss and uh, do 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 is uh, the kiss uh, reference to the kiss song. So um, the benefit of the transition, the DMCA can view everything. 
it has all, it has all the status. And even though this wonderful software is wonderful, it was missing some features. Uh, so I did also a bit of uh, custom software for them to be able to re to uh, note when a uh, room was actually off the of the system. So when some devices were off, like turned off, the room the room was marked off so that the errors coming up from the from the software were ignored. The number of bridges were reduced. So all the all of the bridges, mostly all of the bridges were deleted. No more use of bridges. We have layer three and layer three clocking. So very cool. And uh, less failure points, less bridges, less failure points. As much as I'm uh, sponsored by a company that sells bridge, sell bridges, when you don't need a bridge, don't use a bridge. Uh, control can be done through other VLANs. No need for USB to Ethernet adapters. We had Octopus's computer with four or five Ethernet to USB converters. Um, tech support is easier, of course. IT and media have communicated. They have done the project together, so they exactly know what's happening. So now a simple message on team, and three minutes away, uh, three minutes after the, the switch is configured or the information is provided, simple. Full control. Unregistered devices are not allowed. Clocking config cannot be, be changed. This is the security, the, the security part of, the, of this management software. And less user error because of what we saw, what we saw earlier. Um, not everything can change, and not everybody can change everything. OK, and we are getting to the end of it. Uh, yes, we had, we, clocking is still a problem because we had enough PTP presentation right now, so those who are not in the two previous sessions, you can look at them on YouTube when they will be out. But um, the use of PTP can still be problematic. So for the big, big meeting room with 500 people, we are still isolating that clockwise. So we are still using a bridge for this, just for safety. Uh, but still, the use of PTP v2, clocking through layer 3, etc. Um, and especially this management software will indicate clock mismatch. The number of times they had the clocking problems and didn't know where it, where it was or how it happened. Just knowing which device is re what device, uh, uh, slave device is listening to, this, is, this already solves half the problem. And uh, uh, okay, so uh, unfortunately, some device needed a control software that could that would, could not work outside of a run. But this is all all the all devices. Um, some workflow can only do unicast at layer three. So this means that. You cannot use multicast, you have to use unicast, and the resource management can be more problematic. Uh, the integration work is sizable, uh, so yes, you need specific tool to support the workflow of the team, uh, but this is what APIs are for. And the virtual drivers and firewall, this is a nightmare, because virtual drivers are so we are talking about AOIP drivers. So they are using the network in a non-conventional way and trying to set up the firewall with the, with the drivers is also a hassle between AV and IT because IT is asking, but why do you need it? Why do you need it? Why do you need multicast? Why do you need this port, et cetera? So it was, it was complicated, but eventually it, uh, it was done. OK. So overall, it's a, uh, quite a success. A lot of things uh, that were um, learned during the, uh, during the project. And uh, I have to say, all the people involved in this project were really open in discussing. So it was not, it was not a, a trench war where everybody was fighting for, for its own side. Uh, I tend to, to present it like that to, to, to um, stress on the differences. But the team that was involved in, in this project is really, was really open-minded.
and this is key for the success. Uh, on the other side, right across the river, there is another European organization. What they, what they choose is just use a different network. So they have their own small network for AV. They are not using the IT network. And this, from my point of view, this is a mistake because you are losing all the security aspect, all the, all the help of the IT, because you cannot speak with the, with the IT team. You are pro, um, blocking yourself for, from all those competences that can help you success the project. OK, any question? Thank you. And Clement? happens to work uh, for the European Commission, so your um, topic is uh, right in the right place for us. I'm curious, uh, uh, at the end of a successful project like this one, do the IT people feel more AV and the vice versa, or they stay, they remain in their um, no, I don't no, know, feelings not. separated? No, there, there is a growth in, in both ways. Uh, in the fact that they are more aware of, of the need of each other. Of course, the IT team remains focused on the horizontal perspective because it has to. But uh, the AV team has learned a lot in IT, and especially what I like to do to take to my students, uh, you have to learn, because I, so I'm uh, teaching to some technicians, you have to learn what you cannot do in IT. Just learn enough on, of IT to know what you cannot do. And now they are, the AV team is asking the IT team more often, and this strengthens the, the trust between the two teams. And this is it. This is the trust. When you, when you can trust your colleague to do things when you ask him, and it's not that it's a trust is something relative and really uh, uh, it, it's a feeling more than ever. So when you have this feeling, you're, you're working more gracefully. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you very much, Nicholas. Thank you. We'll invite Andy up.